Good afternoon and welcome to this installment of the Royal LePage Binder Market Report. My name is Dominic Papa. I'll be your host here this afternoon. And if you're at all following the real estate world, which a lot of people do, you know there's a lot of change going on. Um, and we've got the best guy to break it all down for you, to let you know what you should be looking at, to talk about uh, where you should be. He's going to give you some good direction. Of course, I'm talking the uh, uh, the the head guy at Royal LePage Binder Realty, the broker of record, Mr. Frank Binder. He joins us. Good afternoon to you, sir, and thanks for doing this, and uh, great to see you again. Good afternoon, Dom. It's good to see you as well. Lots of changes going on. You're right. That's what we're on that. Well, well you know what? I, I, I last show I, I I went and looked at the, the the last month's show, and I you made a comment uh, during the show. Uh, we got to get ready for some changes. Uh, we got to get ready because there's some changes coming, and you you pretty much emphasized that uh, yeah. on the last show. And I just uh, watched it, uh, you know, uh, earlier today, and and I just smiled because boy, are you hitting the nail on the head there. Yeah. Uh, you know, you said that there was going to be some changes and that we had to adjust and get ready for it. And yeah. I guess the obvious question is uh, how, how much change is going on and, and how do you adjust? And you know what? We're not ready, really not truly able to quantify that really at this point in time because we're still in the midst of it, right? Uh, with the interest rate change of yesterday, uh, I mean, the, we're looking at that and uh, that really is really important for us to see. Uh, it's going to cost everybody more money. Uh, to mortgage their, their property, so mortgage whatever they've got. And I think that's that's uh, effectively uh, causing some uncertainty in the marketplace in terms of what the buyers should do or should we buy now or not buy now. Uh, but they certainly have to recalibrate. There's no question about that. So what they're doing is they're running back to their, uh, their banks or wherever they have to uh, get their funding from, mortgage brokers, wherever it might be. And they have to recalibrate what the costs are going to be and whether I can afford uh, to take that same mortgage uh, at the same level or not, and that's uh, that's fundamentally uh, slowing down the marketplace uh, in that in that way. At the same time, I mean, you've got to look at the cost. And if we got uh, that first slide, we could see the slide with regard to actual cash flow. Uh, and what we're trying to illustrate here, if you look at the if you look at the very last one, we were predicting a, a 75 basis point uh, increase back before yesterday, which was one that was, was 100 basis points, which is so that number is not exactly accurate. But if you just go back to, uh, you know, go back to April, uh, you're 2,500 bucks on, the, on a $500 mortgage, and then now you're up to $3,196. So you're up to you're another $600 just on a half, a half a million dollar loan. And so if you go up from that, you've got much more significant increases. And I think that's really what we have to look at. To, to absorb that kind of increase, and now we've got, uh, it's slightly higher than that. It'd probably be closer to uh, 650 to, six, $650 to $700 on a $500,000 uh, $500, loan. That's per month. So if you, if you equate that over uh, over five years, that's a that's a, that's a $60,000, to $60,000 difference uh, in what you're going to pay in interest over over the five years payment. So it's a, it's a substantial increase, mm -hmm. and you've got to deal with it. And the bottom line is that that's the thing. The key for us is uh, we don't know where there's a there's going to be a corresponding drop in price eventually. Uh, but what is it, you know? And where is it going to end? <laughs> where is it going to bottom out? Uh, that's buyers. Buyers are looking at that, going, well, "I'm trying to figure all that out." Uh, and it's difficult, difficult for realtors to figure that out, let alone buyers. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's what we're having at the moment. Uh, so we're having a, a period of uncertainty, a period of transition. And we have a slowing down of the marketplace because of that. Include the summer. Everybody wanted to get away. Everybody's wanted to get out. They want to go go places. And we understand that. So we're seeing a, a slowdown in the marketplace. But we're seeing an increase in people wanting to sell their house. And we'll we'll get into those those things in just a moment. Yeah, you're tuned in to the Royal LePage Binder Market Report. I'm uh, joined by Mr. Frank Binder. Certainly glad to have everybody along for the ride here and uh, great information already, uh, Mr. Binder. I, I guess uh, I know there's it's just happening, but the increased uh, interest rate uh, that was announced yesterday, I believe, yeah. as as of the taping of this and show. Canada. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I believe it was one percent. Yeah. Uh, how significant is that? How does it affect uh, your industry? It, it, it does. It, uh, it, it, well, uh, 
I don't want to make it's, it will change it because now we are uh, we we are above pre-pandemic levels uh, for sure. Uh, up until this point, we hadn't been, but now we're above pre-pandemic levels. But we've got one little fly in the ointment, and that is that we have inflation. And because we have inflation, uh, we have uncertainty as to whether or not there are going to be further increases. So, you know, the Bank of Canada is talking about they're they're actually uh, advertising the fact that you know we could see we're at two percent since April. We could be by the end of the year well beyond three and three and a half percent. So it's a little hard for us to uh, you know get our bearings, so to speak, because it's a it's a moving target at this point in time. And that's what we didn't have at pre-pandemic. We pretty much had a set rate. We had had that rate for years, and now that's changing on us dramatically. So it's going to have an effect on us. It's going to have an effect on pricing for sure. Uh, we're already seeing seeing the evidence of that. And uh, the bottom line is that we've got to get ready for those changes and. Uh, uh, prepare ourselves. I, th I think I know where you're going to go with this when I ask this. Uh, you mentioned inflation. Uh, of course, food, gas, all those prices are just going up, 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 up. Uh, how does that affect, does it directly affect the real estate market as well? Does, does it uh, create, uh, I guess, different price ranges? Well, you know, let's go back to the if I've got to come up with an extra six hundred dollars mm -hmm. out of my budget, and I'm already eating uh, an extra two hundred dollars in gas, or I'm eating an extra two hundred dollars in groceries, oh uh, yeah, it's going to affect you, uh, particularly first-time buyers. So if you're if you're in a first-time buyer situation, and now you've got to come up with extra money for a mortgage, and I'm paying extra money for all these other things. Uh, which one do I choose? So the bottom line is I've got to choose my daily costs that I've got that I've got to pay for. I may delay buying uh, a home at this point in time, only for the fact that nothing's settled. If the inflation rate gets settled or ultimately does settle down, at least I've got, I don't have a moving target. I don't know what's going to go up or, or you know, is gas prices going to stay where they are, uh, anything. So there's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of unrest there, and people are having significant problems in trying to decide what to do. Uh, you know, this is the biggest decision of a person's life. And when they're doing that, they need to know that they've got the budget to do it. And that's really what it comes down to. And you've got a lot of them, a lot of things weighing on their minds. And so the, the best decision is no decision. Just not, let's not do anything at, the, at this present time. And we're beginning to see that. A lot of people withdrawing from the market or holding back or just waiting to see what they can do. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Uh, we shouldn't expect anything different. You know, so we're, we're seeing that now. We, we see the, uh, if we look at our units sold by price and range, uh, yeah. uh, we go to that, that graph, you're going to find that we've, we've already showing a 27% drop uh, in sales in June. Uh, that, that, that due to, that's really due to the, uh, you know, the predicted rate increases that we've been having and people have been backing off uh, the buying of a house or just kind of waiting to see uh, just where it goes and where it bottoms out, so to speak. And you also see it in the sales over and under. So the sales over 550, uh, that that was a the higher part of our market. Uh, it, you know, look at look at you only have 350 houses sold over the market and 253 under. It's much more coming together. That upper market is slowing down uh, significantly, and uh, that's just basically uh, because the costs that I have to incur in that market is going to be even that higher. It's going to be substantially higher for me. So basically, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of not withdrawing, but I'm certainly sitting on the sidelines at the moment. In terms of what I'm going to decide to do, that's that's exactly what it is. The one million dollar category that we had, uh, it's also showing a, a drop. Uh, we had 48 sales in the month of May. Now we're down to 29 in the month of June. So we continue to see a three month drop in in that market, uh, where there's a, and that's what we're showing here. Basically, is a drop in demand. And so what you what you're seeing is definitely a drop in demand. Uh, in demand. So when you go to if you want to uh, go to the the blue graphs that we've got. We're trying to show you the emphasis of what's happened here, both on the annual basis and on a monthly basis. And in a monthly basis, you can really see the differences in that uh, when we show the monthly average sale price uh, uh, graph. Uh, okay, so, uh, let's get Evan to bring that up for us, uh, the uh, monthly sales graph. And uh, obviously, you know, with these numbers going like this, uh, really, you know, heading downwards right now. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking about the real estate agents themselves. Oh, so here's the, let's get into this first and then I'll get to my question to you, Mr. Biner. But uh, 
uh, here, here's the units sold by price range in June. I think that's the graphic we just went through. We just went through, yeah. Okay, we're looking for the uh, graphic, uh, the, oh, the listings. That's where I was going to go with next. But uh, um, well, there's, a, there's a graph for it's a blue with blue graph, so I'm not sure he's got it. But anyways, what it's showing basically that we hit a peak. Uh, we hit, hit peak sales in March of seven hundred twenty-three thousand dollars in the. It, that was the March average. That was a high of seven twenty-three. We are now dropped down to in June six hundred seven thousand. 704. So you see a significant decrease uh, in the monthly rates, uh, and that's trending that's trending down. So you, you see demand dropping, and that's a, that's a critical part. Yeah, that's there the we go right there. So there basically, what you're seeing is you can see how we really climbed significantly in December, right through to March. That's where the peak was. Now we're on the other side of the peak, and we're going downwards. Not a really steep steep uh, drop. Uh, it's a lesser drop than the climb was, but the bottom line is, is that yes, it's still a, it's still a drop. The average on an annualized basis is even less of a, a less of a drop. Uh, if that you bring that slide up, basically that's a bit of a bit of a, a lesser lesser change, but it still shows uh, you know uh, on an annualized basis that the prices dropped to six hundred seventy four thousand dollars in in. Uh, in June, from a, a high of uh, well over seven hundred thousand, so you hit seven hundred thousand dollars again back in March, and basically we're now at about six seventy four. That's annualized. That's over a twelve month period, but the trend in the month shows you a substantially steeper drop. So, and that's exactly why we want to bring those slides to you in trying mm -hmm. to show you what's going on in the demand side of the equation. Uh, we'll now go to the, the supply side of the, uh, the equation. We go to January listings. Okay, so yeah. All right, let's get that graphic up. Then uh, the uh, re residential listings, if we can, uh, our producer Evan, I'm sure, will get that up for us. There it is, right there. So basically, what happens in this one is that you you can sh you can show you that our listings have been climbing uh, from last year. We're showing a we're showing a 35, almost a 35 and a half percent increase over the listings of uh, June last year. So we were having a lot of people putting their houses on the market for sure. There's no question about that. That has been going on for some time. And I've been alluding to that over the last three months that our supply side continues, the inventory continues to grow, continues to grow. And if that continues to grow and we have, a, have the opposite of supply and demand, demand dropping, uh, we're gonna see price drops eventually. There's no question about it. And that, that is without question. So. That's why when I alluded to it last month, it's exactly what's happening. It's playing out exactly the way I figured it would. And the real big thing right now is really what the inventory is. So at the beginning of, 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 of this particular month of July, we started with 1,450 houses available for sale to the public. That's all of Windsor, Essex County. We seldom have that kind of inventory. Uh, that usually isn't the inventory that we have. Uh, is substantial in nature. Uh, unlike other cities, uh, you know, you'll, you'll find lar other large cities still do not have a big, big supply of homes. And so they, they may not have drops in price as quickly as us. So when you look at averages across the country, it can be skewed because we could be ahead of those averages because we've got mm -hmm. a huge supply of homes. And what we're seeing right now is, is that exactly that increase in uh, and look at the increase, a steep climb yeah. in inventory uh, of homes uh, available for sale over from the beginning of January all the way through to June, end of June, uh, where, it's, where, where, it, where it's high, where it's very high. And today, yeah. as of today, we have 1,584 homes available for sale. So the inventory has also increased in July uh, as to what's available to the public to buy. What does that do? Two things. First, from a buyer's perspective, the good thing is I've got lots of choices. If I want to buy a house, I can look at a lot of, a lot of houses. I can compare. I compare as a shop. From a seller standpoint, first of all, it's going to slow down substantially. You mm -hmm. won't sell a house now in a week or two weeks or even a month. It may take you uh, substantially longer to sell your house because there's fewer buyers and uh, they're going to be looking at more, more things. So it may take them some time to get to your house. That's basically going to be the case. We're already seeing that in the market, that uh, things are lasting longer. We're also seeing 
another thing, uh, the value we haven't seen in a while, we're seeing conditional offers, okay? So what wow. we're now saying, I'm gonna write my offer conditional on my mortgage, I'm gonna write my mortgage. So basically, the, the market's starting to be taken over by buyers, uh, putting in conditions, inspection conditions, uh, mm-hmm. financing conditions, house to sell conditions, and we can expect to go back to that kind of a market. Not all sales now will be a firm sale. What, what do I mean by that? A cash or non-conditional offer being written on a house. For a, for a while, it was a free-for-all pretty much. It was bidding wars left and right. Yeah. Now you're getting back into that, yeah. as you mentioned, that that kind of that routine of uh, the process that you have to go through yeah. selling a house. Good or we, bad. Call, we call it, yeah, we call that a negotiated sale. <laughs> we have okay. to negotiate the sale now all of a sudden. It wasn't just bring me, bring me my, my best offer and I'll just take one, right? It's now right. going to be a negotiated sale between a, probably a single buyer and a single single seller. That is likely what we're going to seek in the foreseeable future right now. And, you know, we're, we're trying to prepare our, our realtors to understand that that will be the case more than likely uh, just because we've got substantial supply. We're also going to see a change in supply over time because there's going to be some buyers who are trying to get uh, a price. I'm, in, I'm trying to get a price for this house. My neighbor got this. I'm, I expect to get this, and rightfully so. Only trouble is they're not going to get it. So unless they've really got to sell their house, they're not going to try to uh, stay in the market if they can't get the price that they want. If that was the reason for the for the listing, uh, so those buyers may cancel their listings ultimately, take them off the market. So I see that happening over the next little while as well. So we will we'll see a bit of a drop in in in, uh, uh, in the supply side somewhat, uh, probably after the summer. But right now, we, we're certainly seeing increases. Sellers uh, are not realizing that they can't get the prices yet. Uh, they will come to that realization in, in, in several months. It takes them a little longer to get there. Buyers, they've already known that since uh, May. They've, they, they've already figured that out and basically are, are looking for the bottom of the market, so to speak, or get to get the house at the best price they can already. So that's, that's definitely uh, happening right now. So speaking of price, let's get into the next topic here, uh, if we can, Mr. Binder, the, the average sale price and exactly. how it's going to be affected and, and, and where it's going. Right. So we're, we have shown, we're showing you here the average on an annualized basis. Okay, what happened annualized from May to, to, to uh, June? And you are, you're seeing just a slight erosion of price, okay? Now, if the, if, if the other, other side of the coin is that the monthly – has dropped down to substantially lower. Okay, it's just six hundred and forty thousand. I think it's, it's ultimately uh, uh, down, or six hundred seven thousand is where the monthly is. But that's just a monthly number, so it's it's not really a true. Uh, a, 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 in a sense, it's not the true number that you'd be looking at. But you're already seeing that you're seeing an erosion of the annualized rate, and expect that to continue to drop a bit. I would, I would suggest to you when you look at July's number, you're going to see another drop. Uh, and it, it will probably be eh, maybe uh, north of 650000 is my guess. But basically, you're going to see another drop in sales prices going forward, only from the, the fact that we're seeing less sales uh, and more inventory of houses and more houses on the, on, the, on the market. Is that a bad thing? Not really, because... Listen, we've, we've, we had substantial increases in prices of homes for the last uh, two years. Uh, we're still well in, into those uh, uh, higher price, prices on the average. And uh, we're, we're seeing a, a correction of that, so to speak, uh, going forward. Uh, how much of a correction? We're not really not sure at this point in time. It will depend on a lot of the economics coming forward as, a, as what, what, we'll, what we'll see in, in our, our economy going forward. Uh, if those are strong, and then they are, uh, I, I, I suggest, suggest you this could be just a, a, a slight correction. Uh, expect a you know 30 40 percent drop in, in price, but uh, that's okay. Uh, it's it's we had a, a 30 we had a 40 percent increase in price to begin with. So a lot of the increase will be eroded away by the end of the year potentially, but uh, we'll still be in very good shape. So uh, if I'm understanding correctly here, Mr. Biner, are you saying that prices will go back to kind of what they were? before all of this, uh, the bidding wars and all of that stuff? Uh, will we see those type of prices like rolled back to that far or, or I, is it going to level you know, off somewhere? We can speculate. I don't want to speculate, uh, mm-hmm. Don, really. 
it's not uh, not the right thing for me to do to speculate where that could be. But the bottom line is we, we're seeing an erosion. Uh, I mean, if if the situation continues the way it's we, the way it's the way it's continuing right now, and we continue to get more and more supply and less and less buyers. Uh, it, you know, it's the old supply demand uh, routine uh, that will happen. I can't, I can't give you uh, a sense of the timing of that, but the bottom line is that's what we're seeing in our particular market, a substantially increase in supply and, and also a, a lesser demand at the, at, the, at the current time. I think ultimately people will, once they've kind of got uh, a finger or a pulse on, on these changes that we've been going through on the interest rates, they will be able to make decisions. Once they are able to do that, uh, they will come in back into the market and try to buy what they have to buy. Uh, because really, people still want their homes. They still want to live in homes. Mm. And uh, that will happen. So it's, it's just this uncertainty. We have to go through this period of uncertainty, which is maybe two months. I'm looking by, by mid-September. It really it has a lot to do with what we call a rate hold on the interest. If I get a mortgage, I have a rate hold of anywhere from 60 to 120 days. Like I've, I've got to buy a house in that rate hole, but if I lose that rate hole, I've got to, I have to re, uh, rejig that and I have to start again. And that's basically what's happening. So usually that's going to be a two month situation, possibly a three month situation. Uh, by that time, much of this will be worked out. But remember what's happening. If the Bank of Canada takes more, more, uh, more actions with regard to interest rates, uh, we could be looking at more increases later on. If that happens, we will continue to have uncertainty in our market, uh, and then, you know the, the real estate market will take uh, will take some uh, some kind of a hit because of that. There's no question about that. Uh, they they will definitely have a hit because uh, I don't know that all people can absorb uh, these increases and, and not change their plans with regard to uh, buying or selling. With that, let's move on here, Mr. Binder, and. and uh... Another area that's changing is the is the graphic uh, the uh, gra uh, the sales list ratio the sales yeah. list ratio. We'll yeah. get a graphic up here of that, and you yeah. can explain it to our, our viewers. Yeah. So this is again an annualized rate. So a balanced market is between forty to sixty percent. That's the balanced market. Anything over sixty percent is a uh, seller's market. Anything under a forty percent is a buyer's market. And basically, this is showing a, a bit of an erosion from sixty-one to fifty-one, fifty-five percent. Uh, these are numbers that don't really change dramatically, but we've seen a 6% drop. Uh, but what's really, really important for you to realize is that the drop on a monthly basis was 35%. So your 35% of buyers, 35% of the listings that we had sold in, in the month of June for the month of June only. So that's a significantly lower rate, which means that it's going to drag down that, that uh, list to sell ratio even further. Uh, right now, in, in the month of uh, July, we're in the 20s rate, uh, range, okay? So that, that there is still more pressure on that rate to come down, and it's likely going to erode more. Let's look for a, a sales list ratio to drop, uh, and I don't know whether, it, I don't know where it's going to end up on the annualized basis, but if it's, we're, we're starting to approach more of that buyer's territory, that bottom line of the balance market is 40%, we'll be moving in towards we're moving towards that balanced market at the bottom of it and we're also moving into a buyer's market a lot of people would argue would argue with me that we're already there uh in a buyer's market uh you know i'm not ready to call it that way because uh you know i, I prefer to see the statistics that say that and support that so it's uh it's but it's moving it's moving in that in that range and if we if we see uh significant drops in uh, in, in buyers uh you know the buyer demand uh, that's where it's going to move. And the bottom line is that uh, we, we will have sellers chasing fewer buyers, trying to get uh, their home, home to sell, sold, which we have not seen. I mean, we have not seen that in four years. Uh, it's, it's really, we've been in that seller's market territory for a long yeah. time. And uh, if that, that's, it's already starting to change on us and we need to, uh, we need to uh, recognize those changes going forward. Uh, sellers need to recognize them for sure that uh, that uh, you know it's it's i'm not i'm not going to uh, get uh you know multiple offers and and that type of thing more than likely that's not going to happen uh not, not, okay. i'm not saying it can't but let me just stress one thing it's very localized so uh, if i'm in a particular neighborhood and uh there's very few properties there for sale you can still get multiple offers so 
I want to I want to caution people that it's not across the board. Okay, it's very very localized. So the bottom line is we have experienced still in this month multiple offers, fewer, but they're still there depending on where they're located, right? And it really depends on how much competition do you have or don't have in that particular neighborhood that tells you whether you're gonna whether you're gonna get multiple offers or not. All right, uh, Evan has the next chart ready for us. Let's bring that up, and uh, you can explain. Here, here's the year to date. Yep. That's uh, 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 list so. What you find in the, in the sales to list ratio, it follows that same buyers uh, buyers market chart chart that you had, right? Uh, that mm -hmm. we were showing earlier. The the sales price it will follow that same gradual decline, and that's exactly what it's doing. It's following the same decline that you would have had in the uh, in the uh, uh, the buyers the average sale price that we saw in the uh, earlier graphs that we provided to you, uh, it's, it's following the same trend. So it's a downward trend. Uh, where will it end up in July? Uh, it'll be, it, it will definitely be lower, no question about it. Uh, only from the fact that we've got more supply and that supply is not, uh, not flying off the shelf, so to speak. And that's basically what it is. It comes down to that. Uh, expect that, that to drop a bit more. And uh, it's a gradual thing. Is it a bad thing? No, it's not really a bad thing. Bottom line is there all the economies that we have in, in our city are good. Uh, mm -hmm. Unemployment is good. The numbers are, are good. GDP is good. So all the things are, are all the those uh, economic uh, uh, factors are, are good uh, for our marketplace. So ultimately, uh, we will we, we will land. I think most people are calling it a soft landing. I'm expecting the same at the moment. Uh, I haven't seen anything that's drastic that's going to uh, change my mind on that. But this is a transition. Uh, understand this is a transition. That's the message we're trying to get out today. We want to make sure that people understand the transition is going on. And that, that's okay. Uh, we've gone through them before. Uh, the bottom line is that it's, it's important when you have a little fall, you want to make sure that it's not a, uh, that's not a deep fall. This is a, a small yeah. fall and uh, it's a stumble, so to speak. So if we're stumbling, that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, and I and I have a lot of friends in the real real estate world, and they always have. In the, and you've been a veteran of this industry forever. Uh, nobody knows it better than you. Uh, there has been times it's changed. It's changed off and on. It's been up and down, things like that. But I think fair to say it, it with this round of change, uh, the numbers went ex extremely high, and now we're trying to get back down to a level. Or it's going back down to a level where I think people will, I guess, entertain buying a house or selling a house. I'm not sure how that all works, but how do you handle these changes like this? Like the industry is always going up and down, and it just never seems to be just uh, level and, and and just rolling along steadily. Yeah, it, it, it won't. Well, yeah, bottom line, you're going to have changes. Uh, you know, yeah. We have stock markets. We have all kinds of different things where that happens as well. Why would uh, the, the housing market is not, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. not any different in the sense that we will have those changes. Usually it doesn't happen quite as fast, but here's what happens. If I was in Toronto right now, we've had, uh, they've had $200,000 prices, price changes. But re let's remember something. When I'm talking about an average price of in the $1.2 to $1.5 million range, all right, a $200,000 drop is, is 20%. Okay, that's that's basically it. Uh, you know, or two or three hundred thousand dollar drop is twenty percent. So, with us, we're at half of that level. Okay, and we're getting a hundred thousand dollar drop so far. So, you know, it, it, it's 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 okay. Uh, but was was this seven hundred thousand dollar price sustainable? Uh, probably not. Probably not in our market. You know, we had uh, we had low interest rates. We had uh, a lot of people. Uh, you know, some people speculating. We had migration we had a lot of things going on during the pandemic that we hadn't seen for a long time which is mm -hmm. which were new to us uh, a lot of torontonians buying property in our in our city that that uh, raised the value uh uh because they were competing uh, you know uh, whether you think it's fair or whether they don't uh, they they were buying they were able to buy houses here uh, and pay more money for them so mm -hmm. that's really the the situation that we have to look at uh, we have to look at that that was a, a kind of a one-time thing uh, whether that will happen ever again, I'm not quite sure. Uh, we'll have migration, but it won't be a, a pandemic-induced migration. It will be typical migration that we have that, that people are immigrating here for jobs and so on and so forth. And we do have a great job market, so that's, that's a good yeah. thing. We should look forward to those things going forward.
Yeah, that, that is positive for sure. On that note, we will uh, wrap up this edition of uh, the Royal LePage Binder Market Report. Uh, Mr. Binder, always great to talk to you again. Thank you for the yeah. education I uh, received here today. Yeah. Uh, next month, of course, I think we will we will kind of tease it here a little bit. I'm sure we're going to talk about the interest rate, how it's affecting things, and uh, we'll see where all of this is going to. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the, uh, of course, the uh, the ratios dropping, things like that. Uh, I'm sure you'll have us uh, uh, well educated then again next month. But uh, good stuff today. Uh, Again, I hope everybody is uh, staying well there at Royal LePage Binder. Uh, stay positive, stay strong, yeah. and uh, everybody stay safe uh, more than anything. You know, uh, let's uh, let's uh, keep going forward here. As Mr. Binder said, we're all working. We're all doing some good things right now. Let's keep it going. So have a great day. Thank uh, you. Don't forget. Yeah, thank you. And don't forget to check out the Royal LePage uh, uh, Binder website uh, for any information you may need. If you want to get in touch with them, they'd love to hear from you. Also, all the social media pages, uh, Royal LePage Binders on all of them. You can communicate with them uh, there uh, uh, very easily. And uh, as I mentioned, they would love to hear from you. So we're going to wrap it up. Uh, thank you to everybody that tuned in. Uh, check us out again next month. Uh, follow us. Uh, here on We Digital, also at the Royal LePage Binder. We'll have a date for you for our next show, and we'll talk more real estate with uh, Mr. Frank Binder. Until then, take care, everybody. Stay safe and have a great day.